Assalamu alaikum, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today we are going to study about the Kaposi sarcoma. So what is Kaposi sarcoma? It is the intermediate grade neoplasm of the endothelial cells. Keep in mind, it is the intermediate grade neoplasm of the endothelial cells, and it is mostly caused by the Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus, also known as the human herpes virus 8. Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus or the human herpes virus intermediate grade in a sense that it is the neoplasm between the benign and malignant neoplasm its malignancy is between the benign and the malignant neoplasm that's why it is known as the intermediate grade neoplasm of the endothelial cells it is the most common uh, sarcoma or neoplasm in the patient with AIDS. In the patient with AIDS is the most common neoplasm in patient with AIDS. Now coming towards the AIDS pathogenesis, that how does the human herpes virus 8 or the Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus cause this neoplasm? So when this virus infects the endothelial cells, they pump the virally encoded G protein in such endothelial cells. For example, this is the endothelial cells and the virus came in and they infect this endothelial cell. In this cell, they form the G proteins and this proteins, this G proteins induces the vascular endothelial growth factors which in turn stimulate the endothelial cell proliferation and thus produce a Kaposi sarcoma. It is one mechanism by which it produces the Kaposi sarcoma. The other mechanism is that, that when it infects the endothelial cells, then inflammation occurs. And in this inflammation, recruitment of the inflammatory cells to the site of inflammation occurs. As we have, as we are know that inflammation, the inflammatory cell, uh, cells come to the site of inflammation. And this inflammatory cells in turn produce cytokines. And these cytokines cause the cellular proliferation of the endothelial cells and thus producing Kaposi sarcoma. Also when this human herpes virus is uh, latently present in the endothelial cells it can also produce Kaposi sarcoma by a mechanism that encodes proteins and these proteins in turn disrupt the normal cellular proliferation controls disrupt the normal cellular proliferation control or they may also prevent the apoptosis of the cells which are abnormally produced or contains abnormal proteins by inhibiting the P53 gene or protein. They inhibit this gene and this P53 gene is a protein which causes the apoptosis of the abnormal cells and thus they produce the or cause the stimulation preparations of the endothelial cells producing Kaposi sarcoma. Keep in mind an important point that human herpes virus 8 and the altered T cellular immunity are required by the Kaposi sarcoma development. When there is altered T cell immunity and the human herpes virus 8 is present, then those patients or those people are at more risk. <coughs> Sorry, those people are at more risk for de developing the Kaposi sarcoma. Now there are many forms of Kaposi sarcoma like the classic Kaposi sarcoma, the AIDS associated, the transplant associated and the apricot are so known as the endemic Kaposi sarcoma. First talking about the classic Kaposi sarcoma and these classic Kaposi sarcoma are most common in the older people of the Eastern European males. It consists of three words in older people, Eastern European in the males. So they are more common in the older Eastern European and the males, not the women's. And the lesions of this classical or classic Kaposi sarcoma are localized to the skin and they are usually present in the distal lower extremities. And they may spread proximally, but mostly they are present in the distal lower extremities. And these lesions require the surgical excision in order to eliminate them. The other one is the aid associated so as indicated by the name it is most common HIV related malignancy 
and they mostly involve the lymph nodes and they can easily or at early stage they can spread into the viscera and can cause malignancy in the viscera. The only treatment for the AIDS associated carpal sarcoma is it is AIDS associated HIV associated so the antiretroviral drugs are the drug of choice for the AIDS associated carpal sarcoma. The third one is the transplant associated carpal sarcoma and it mostly occurs in the solid organ transplant recipients solid organ transplant recipients and it mostly involves the viscera the mucosa but cutaneous lesions may be absent the cutaneous lesions which are mostly present in the other sarcomas kaposi sarcoma types of kaposi sarcoma they are mostly absent in the transplant associated kaposi sarcoma and they have a very aggressive course in contrast to the associated or the classical kaposi sarcoma it has an aggressive course and they can be treated by giving immunosuppression suppressant by decreasing the uh, Immunosuppression, we can treat the transplant associated Kaposi sarcoma. The fourth one is the apricot, or which is also known as the endemic Kaposi sarcoma, and it is usually present in the younger people, those who have age less than 40 years of age. In contrast to the classical uh, Kaposi sarcoma, which are usually present in the older people, and it also involves the limb nodes and the viscera. And if it involves the viscera, then it takes the severe palm. It is the severe palm when it involves the viscera. And the apricot or endemic Kaposi sarcoma has a 100% mortality rate within the 3 years. So it is the most dangerous palm of Kaposi sarcoma, the apricot or the endemic Kaposi sarcoma. Now the clinical findings, so the patient present as purple patches, plaques or nodules. These are also the morphological lesions which in which, which we will discuss in the morphology. So let's talk about these kind of lesions in the morphology. So the lesions of Kapu sarcoma as we already discussed in the sixth in three palms, the patches, the plaques and the nodules. The patches being the initial palm and they are characterized by red, pink or purple macules and they are typically confined to the distal lower extremities. Red, pink or purple macules typically confined to lower extremities as you can see the patches on the put of a patient with Kaposi sarcoma. These are the patches red, pink or purple. And microscopically we can see this dilated irregular and angulated blood vessels lined by the endothelial cells dilated irregular and angulated blood vessels lined by the endothelial cells which are infected by the Kaposi sarcoma and also there are chronic inflammatory cells infiltrates. So these two points dilated irregular angulated blood vessels lined by the endothelial cells and the chronic inflammatory cells infiltrates are the microscopic features of the patches. The other one is the plaques. These patches progress to the plaque and they are grossly characterized by the large raised violet lesion as you can see these are the violet raised lesions on the put up a patient with cover with Kaposi sarcoma and microscopically we can see as dilated dermal vascular channels the vessels are dilated and they are present in the dermis i.e. in the skin and they are mostly lined by the and surrounded by the plump spindle cells. The endothelial cells after infected by the Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus is converted into the plump, plump mean rounded, rounded or spindle cells. Also we can see the extravasated red cells from these vascular channels and when this Red cells are taken by the macrophages and neutropenes. We can see in the slide as hemosiderin laden macrophages. Hemosiderin laden macrophages. As you can see, the hemosiderin laden macrophages on the slide. You can also see these are the, this is the vascular channel, and they are surrounded by the, these plump spindle cells this is not channels this is cells 
surrounded by plum spindle cells these are the channel this is the channels and they are surrounded by the plum spindle cell now this if it is not treated this plaque can be converted into a nodules and nodules are what they are raised lesions as you can see these are the red raised lesions present mainly throughout the body and microscopically we can see the plum proliferating spindle cells open with slit like vascular spaces the endothelial cells become converted into the plum proliferative spindle cells open with slit like vascular channels which they uh, involve we can also see the hemorrhage the extravasation of blood from this kind of vascular spaces and the macropages containing hemosiderin and they are much more than the plaques also we can see the mitotic figures here you can see the extravasated rbc extravasated red blood cells from the vascular channels these are the extravasated also these are the slit like spaces which are surrounded by or lined by the plump spindle cells these are the vascular channels all of this this is the hemorrhage we can see in the slide this is the hemorrhage and the vascular spaces and they are mostly lined by the pleomorphic or spindle cells as you can see these are the pleomorphic i will erase them so that you can see normally these are the vascular channels and they are mostly lined by these kind of pleomorphic or spindle like cells endothelial cells so that's all for today thank you